What's up guys? So today I'm going to be reading another story from Martyr's Mirror written around uh, the 1600s, 1660 by Thelman J. Von Brat. It's basically a compendium of hundreds, thousands of, of stories of different Christians who throughout the ages were burned, tortured, stoned to death, uh, for their faith in Jesus Christ uh, all the way starting from John the Baptist then Jesus Christ and on through all the Apostles and like I said all the way up till the 1600s okay so today we're gonna be reading about Clement the Scotchman who was burned as a heretic in the year 7 was that 756 AD so a lot of these persecutions came from the Roman Catholic Church and um, unfortunately the, the Catholic Church was, was, I mean, almost obsessive compulsive when it came to uh, purging the church of heretics, uh, so much so that it actually persecuted real Bible-believing Christians. So a lot of these accounts are, are people who came out of the Catholic Church and rejected like a lot of the false doctrines like, you know, baptizing babies and um, praying to the Eucharist and and all the other uh, superstitions that the Roman that the Roman Catholic Church had incorporated, um, so they came out just believing the Bible, just being faithful to the Word of God, not uh, not embracing extra stuff that the Catholic Church had um, embraced. So, um, <clears throat> and that's where you get like the Anabaptists. Uh, I myself am a Baptist, and Baptists trace their origins back to the Anabaptists and they trace their origins all the way back to the disciples of Jesus Christ. So we're going to be reading about Clement of Scotland, a companion of Albert, excommunicated and then burned as a heretic by the Romanists according to the testimony of the ancients AD 750 for the name, or excuse me, for the same reason, namely for opposing and rejecting the Roman superstitions. So please forgive me if my uh, uh, reading is not <laughs> uh, is not intellectually sounding, I do apologize. I will do my best as this is old ancient English, um, but it is still quite understandable. So it, it's a very good read. I and you know I enjoy reading this book. And if you would like a copy of this book, please contact my cell phone. Um, 940-301-1663 again 940-301-1663 uh, just call or text me and I will give you the I will give you the instructions on how you can get a copy of this book from me if you'd like to support my ministry and my YouTube channel uh, that would be greatly appreciated all right so we're gonna begin it says when Clement having come from Scotland had joined the aforesaid Albert as a companion and united with him in regard to doctrine he not only began but ceased not even as the friend whom he had found to combat with the spiritual armor and if possible to overcome in an evangelical manner the Pope and the Roman Church in various points touching mostly her ceremonies thereupon he was also accused and put to death in such a manner as in the proper place we presently hope to show the accusations brought against him were of the same nature as those preferred against Albert, his companion, which was not at all strange, since he had placed himself under Albert not only as a friend and companion, but also as a disciple. For this reason, the Pope, through the accusation of Boniface, the papal legate, pronounced the same excommunication against him. But when he presented himself for the purpose of vindicating his conduct in a full synod, Boniface prevented him from taking this course, making the people believe that it were not lawful to admit a heretic who had been excommunicated or excluded from the church to divine worship, or to a synodal assembly, yea, that such an one should not be permitted to have the benefit, and whatever this might consist of the laws or ordinances of the church, seeing that by this pretense his lips were sealed making it impossible for him to properly defend himself he had recourse to his pen and wrote a book concerning this matter against boniface finally it is stated and maintained that this steadfast witness of jesus christ was burned as a heretic 
by the Romanists, even against the will of Pope Zacharias about 750 AD, or a little after. By the way, I do apologize uh, if it's a little loud in here. I do have my AC on, so I'll try to turn that down. Okay, so, and then it gives the reference, uh, compare this entire account of Clement with yada, 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 yada. You can read that for yourself. Okay, now, further observations touching the case of Albert and Clement, Clement, according to the account of Sebastian France. Okay, mind you, I, I am not, uh, I do not have a doctorate degree or master's degree even. I have at best an associate's degree, so if, if my reading is, is uh, an elementary comprehension, I do apologize. I, uh, I, I don't think I'm the best reader here, but I definitely am going to do my best so you can fully understand what we're reading. Okay, now, it says, in the year, etc., these two men drew to them much people in France pretending to be followers of the apostles and speaking great things of the mysteries of God and the life and conduct of man Boniface Archbishop of France wrote the whole the whole matter to the Pope who in a council of the bishops laid it before them they rejected the opinions of the supposed heretic from the church finally he says they were unanimously deposed and anathemized Okay, and then that reference. All right, special account of Clement, Clement according to P.J. Twisk. So apparently, um, <clears throat> um, Thelma J. Von Braut, he, he went to certain libraries and uh, certain, uh, oh gosh, uh, public records to pull these accounts of these people, uh, especially out in like Denmark and, and whatnot, uh, places in Europe. So he, he gets a lot of these uh, uh, stories from from actual public records of you know the governments in those days. All right, so it says special account of Clement according to P.J. Uh, Twist. It says Clement Scotus, a faithful disciple of Bishop Audibert, taught with great power in France and Germany, especially in Bavaria and Franconia. I can't say that Franconia that the Pope ought not to have so much power that he, the Pope, very improperly would forbid the priests or teachers to marry, that he introduced many new and unknown ceremonies into the church and or originated false doctrines. He, Clement, was condemned without a hearing or examination and his writings or books were burned. And that says, of, the t of two followers of the aforesaid matter, named Samson and Synodius, who with with others maintained these doctrines against popery, particularly against the papal legate Boniface, Archbishop of Mayence, but whether for this they were martyred is not stated. So Samson was also a Scotchman by descent and an elder and companion of said Clement. He said Synodius, Bishop in Bavaria, and others of like purpose and belief were as one heart and soul, as per, as oppose, excuse me, to oppose with the word of God, Boniface, the papal legate, who proposed to oppress the people with manifold superstitions and burdens. This not only Samson, but also Synodius and the others boldly did. They taught with word and pen that the apo apostolic embassy, as it was called, of Bishop Boniface bore a closer resemblance to paganism or anti-Christendom than to Christendom, and that he had deformed rather than reformed. France and Germany, again, that he was a uh, psychophant and flatterer of the Pope, to whom he had not only bound but completely sold himself as a sworn slave. This they were able to prove since by the solemn oath he had sworn to the po two popes, Zacharias I and Gregory II, that he would bring all the persons whom he should draw to him also into obedience to the Roman See. These sayings were known from documents written by himself and transmitted to said popes. They also censured him for his evil practices in the administration of baptism, that is, infant baptism, consisting in the saying of certain words by way of exorcism. And this, uh, several questions were generally put to the unintelligent infants, namely, believest thou, etc. Whereupon the sponsors of, in the said, excuse me, in the child's name answered, 
yea, I believe, etc. Which things certainly deserved no little censor, though without them infant baptism had but little virtue, respectively. Hang on one second. Hey, what's up? Hey, Brian, got one. Okay, all right, I'm coming, I'm on my way. Okay, bye. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, all right, so they were also, uh, let's see, they were also greatly offended because he would forbid them to marry as contrary to the institution of God, Genesis chapter 1, 20, uh, verse 27, 28, yay, as being a doctrine of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Finally, it is stated that said persons and others unable in Germany as well as in France to bring about any improvement with their doctrine were greatly oppressed, partly through the tyranny of the popes of Rome and partly through the authority of the kings of France, yea, were condemned in open synods, deposed from their ministry, and shut up in prisons and dungeons, and thus closely guarded that they might not escape. But as to what finally became of these persons and others of like belief, a millennia states that the papistic historians are ashamed to tell. So a lot of these, uh, you know, historical accounts are, were written by <laughs> the, uh, the very people that, uh, you know, burned these Christians. So uh, it's, it's, it's very fascinating uh, historical accounts of people who believed in Jesus and because of their belief and their opposition to uh, superstition or to heresy, they were burned as, as heretics. Uh, so, you know, they were hunted and burned and, and destroyed like criminals. So it, it, it's really, really, really interesting and sad all the same, all at the same time. But you know, Jesus Christ in the Book of Revelation gave promise to, you know, different Christians. He said, "Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life." So you know, it's it wasn't the end for these people. You know, we think what what a tragedy. You know, they were destroyed and hunted and weren't given fair trials sometimes they weren't given any trials uh they were just you know murdered uh by the system in those days and you know well I, fact is jesus christ is going to reward them with eternal life um fascinating stories you should read it like i said if you want a, a copy of this book you know please feel free to contact me if you'd like to support my ministry uh just you know, obviously, just contact me by phone, 940-301-1663, and uh, we can go from there. I'll tell you exactly how uh, to purchase this book from me, and uh, yeah, you guys are welcome to read this on your own and enjoy. All right, take care. God bless. I'm Brian Price.